OK, in this section, we are going to be looking at the normal distribution. So um, this is an example of a continuous probability distribution, unlike the binomial distribution and what we were looking at previously with discrete distributions. So whereas the binomial could take on only discrete values, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., um, the normal distribution can take on any value in between. So um, the normal distribution is really working with uh, things like heights and lengths and so on, any and volumes, anything that is uh, on a continuous scale. Okay, and the normal distribution is a particular type of distribution, uh, continuous distribution, um, which is symmetric uh, and is really introduced via the bell curve. Okay, is another word for it, another name for it. So the bell curve is often how you will hear it referred to. Um, uh, other than the normal distribution, and it looks kind of like a, a bell shape. Um, and the model is perfectly symmetrical uh, about the mean. So the mean value of the population we refer to using uh, the Greek letter mu, M-U as it's spelt, but written is kind of a variation on an M. Okay, so that's our uh, mean, and so the uh, probabilities that go with the normal distribution are the areas within and underneath this bell curve. Okay, so 50% uh, is up above the mean, and 50% is below the mean. Okay, so the mean, the mu, splits this distribution completely in half. Now, the way that I've drawn it, it looks like uh, the distribution just ends. Here, but actually, these are asymptotes. These the curve continues to get closer and closer and closer and closer to the uh, x-axis, okay, and likewise in this direction as well, okay. So the probabilities get smaller and smaller and smaller the further away you are. Um, but still, as uh, we should be aware with the discrete distributions like the binomial, all the probabilities must still add up to one. So the area must be equal to 1, the total area, OK? So including those little bits that go off to infinity, the total area must all be equal to 1. Now, as to do with the shape of it, uh, the normal distribution um, is defined by its mean and its variance. OK, so how we write it down is that x is normally distributed with its mean mu and its variance sigma squared. Now, the unfortunate thing is that in the majority of cases, we want to talk about its standard deviation. Um, but the way that we write it down in notation for historical purposes, uh, we write it down with its variance, which is a little bit of a nuisance, but we can uh, take care of that. So the mean tells you where the centre is. The variance, or standard deviation, tells you how spread out it is. Okay? So when we talk about standard deviations away from the mean, okay, then if we just look at one standard deviation away, then one standard deviation to the left, so mu take away one standard deviation, and mu plus one standard deviation, this represents approximately 68% of the information. Okay, so 68% is contained within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so within one standard deviation, okay, is approximately 68%. Now, when you get to two standard deviations, OK, so mu take away two standard deviations, mu plus two standard deviations. So within two, you can see that we've already got nearly all of the information. This is actually approximately 95% of the information. Okay. 
So by the time you get to 3, okay, so if I continue drawing this, so we'll say 3 is there. So three standard deviations, we're talking about 99.7%, I think it is. So if you go to four standard deviations, then you're at 99.99%, okay? But we say that the majority of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean, okay? If it is normally distributed. Um, this is one of the conditions, really, that if you can show that uh, a good proportion of the data will be outside of three standard deviations, then in all likelihood, uh, the data isn't normally distributed. Okay? So this is the bell curve. This is the normal distribution, how it is set up. And our job is to deal with problems that involve finding probabilities based on a normal distribution. So based on finding the areas of this curve. Okay, So that's what we're going to be looking at in the next video. Sometimes uh, we'll want to not just find the error, but given uh, an area, find the particular value on the x-axis that attributes to it. Um, we can deal with some simultaneous equations, and we'll be looking at more complicated problems as we go on through this section.